Hello and welcome to FuseNet's briefing on the food security outlook for Yemen and Afghanistan for the period of June 2022 to January 2023. Um, my name is Diana Bartone, Senior Food Security Analyst based in FuseNet's Washington, D.C. office. Um, and in today's briefing, first, as usual, for anyone who is unfamiliar, I'll give a quick overview of FuseNet's approach to early warning analysis, including a look at the integrated phase classification or IPC scale that we use to classify acute food insecurity outcomes. And we'll then turn to our content for Yemen, followed by Afghanistan. So FUSENET's approach to early warning analysis relies on an eight-step scenario development process, which is illustrated on this slide. And all of our analysis occurs within a livelihoods framework that allows us to understand how households typically access food and income to meet their basic needs. And so within this framework, we start our analysis by gathering data and information to inform an understanding of households' current access to food and income and any gaps that they may be facing in their ability to meet their needs. And this informs our classification of current food security outcomes. We then develop evidence-based assumptions about the likely evolution of key drivers of acute food insecurity throughout our projection period. And then we translate these into expectations for impacts on households' access to food and income in that period. We then synthesize these expectations into an understanding of whether households' access to food and income is likely to meet their needs. And again, any gaps that, they're, that they may face. And then from there, we classify most likely food security outcomes according to the gaps that we expect they will be facing first at the household level and then at the area level based on the population distribution of outcomes. Finally, we always identify any events that might change the most likely scenario, such as for example, a change in the rainfall forecast. And for classifying and mapping acute food security outcomes, FuseNet uses the globally recognized IPC scale. And this scale has five phases of increasing severity defined in terms of households' ability or inability to meet their food and essential non-food needs. And at the household level, these phases range from phase one, none, to phase five, catastrophe. And I would note that already in phase three, and of course, as well in higher phases, um, which you see outlined in the dotted line, households require urgent humanitarian assistance to prevent food consumption gaps or damage to livelihoods that would threaten their food consumption in the future. And as already mentioned, we start by classifying outcomes at the household level, um, as you can see here. And then after this, we classify outcomes at the area level based on the worst phase of acute food insecurity that we expect at least 20% of the population in the area is facing. So as an example for an area to be classified in phase three, the worst off 20% of households would be facing phase three or worse outcomes. So a key point for interpreting our mapping is that within any given area, there can be households facing worse outcomes than the area level classification that you see mapped. But this group would be less than 20% of the area's population. And at the area level, the phase definitions are similar to those at the household level, but also include criteria for incorporating population level data on acute malnutrition and mortality. So now turning to our analysis for Yemen. First for orientation in the season, this is FuseNet's seasonal calendar for Yemen. Though there is significant variability in seasonality across regions of the country, this shows some broad trends at the national level. And I wanna point out that the first harvest of cereals has recently concluded in many rural areas. And in June, the first rainy season has also concluded across most of the country. Um, and most of June is considered a dry period and also marks the onset of the agricultural off season in the lowlands when access to food and income becomes um, relatively scarce. So in Yemen, conflict continues to be the main driver of acute food insecurity. 
However, the ceasefire that entered into force on April 2nd has led to a reduction in conflict, though ceasefire violations have continued to occur. The overall reduction in conflict, however, is what you can see illustrated on this slide, which is showing um, drawing from ACLID data, the number of violent events of three types, and these are armed clashes, air, drone, air or drone strikes, and shelling artillery and missile attacks. Um, in the April, in the period of April 2nd to June 30th, which um, is the period, a three month, approximate three month period after the ceasefire entered into force. And this is um, comparing the number of events in the April to June period in 2022 to the same time period of previous years. And you can see that the total number of these events is lower in, uh, in 2022, looking at the red bar compared to recent years, driven by a reduction in armed class clashes and air and drone strikes. However, the number of shelling incidents during the truce period has been higher than the same time period of most recent years, likely at least partially due to the fact that ceasefire violations have often taken the form of shelling. And overall, the total number of these incidents recorded in this three month ceasefire period um, shown here was 15% lower than the immediate um, prior three month period before the truce from January 1st um, to April 1st of 2022 and was 32% below the five year average for the same time period. Um, and as a result of overall declining levels of conflict, um, there have been positive impacts, um, which have uh, translated into some improvements in the food security situation. And these have included through um, reductions in levels of conflict driven displacement, improvements in humanitarian access, um, and also some improvements in economic and business activity due to the declining levels of conflict and improved access. However, um, some key trade routes do remain closed in the country, despite the fact that the opening of those roads were an important provision of the ceasefire. Um, and also, despite the reduction in conflict with the ceasefire, macroeconomic conditions in Yemen do remain poor overall, given the impacts of more than seven years of protracted conflict on economic and business activity, as well as um, low levels of government, government revenue um, resulting from this and low levels of government control controls um, that they can exert over the economy. So one major um, factor is the shortage that sh is that the shortages of government revenue, and these also continue to lead to insufficient provision of public services and disruptions to payment of civil servant salaries across the country, and low levels of foreign exchange reserves controlled by the internationally recognized government, or IRG, as I'll refer to to it, continue to result in instability of the local currency in IRG-controlled areas of the country. And that is what we see on this slide, which shows the parallel market exchange rate in key reference markets of Aden, which is in IRG-controlled territory, and Sana'a City, which is in territory controlled by the Sana'a-based authorities, um, which I will refer to as SBA throughout the presentation. Um, and this is from January 2021 to June 2022. And as you can see in IRG controlled areas, the currency depreciated throughout most of 2021 and has been more volatile throughout 2022 to date as the market has responded to various political and economic developments, um, including two notable periods of recovery of the currency. The first having occurred in late 2021 alongside the introduction of a new currency auction mechanism and the second in April 2022 alongside the truce, um, which also came with the formation of the new Presidential Leadership Council in IRG controlled areas um, and the promise of economic reforms and also the announcement at the same time of a significant financial aid package from Gulf countries. However, outside of these events, as you can see, the currency does tend to be um, 
tending to resume its trend of depreciation um, due to the shortages of foreign exchange and the inability of authorities to intervene meaningfully in the market overall. And in June 2022, the local currency in Aden had lost almost 9% of its value against the US dollar compared to the previous month and was also valued 17% lower than the same time period of the previous year. So still um, lower value than the previous year despite the improvements. And this is significant because Yemen is highly dependent on imports of essential food and non-food commodities, including fuel, and depreciation of the currency makes imports more expensive, with costs being passed on to consumers through rising domestic prices. Um, meanwhile, um, looking to the orange line in SBA-controlled areas, um, including the reference market of Sana'a City, the exchange rate has remained generally stable due to a combination of strict control measures and better supply of foreign currency through trade and remittances. And one positive development from the uh, truce and outcomes of implementation of provisions of, of the truce and ceasefire has been an increase in fuel availability in SBA controlled areas. So after um, this chart is showing food and fuel imports through the Western Red Sea ports in um, SBA controlled territory from January 2019 to May 2022 um, with fuel uh, imports shown in green and the three month moving average um, denoted by the green line. And as you can see, after more than a year of reduced fuel import levels and um, resultant fuel shortages in SBA controlled areas due to the Saudi led coalition's blockade of the Red Sea ports, fuel levels through the ports of Al Hadida and Salif have notably increased in April and May. Um, and this is alongside a provision of the ceasefire, allowing for the discharge of 18 fuel vessels in that time. Uh, and as a result, fuel availability in SBA controlled areas has significantly improved since April. Fuel is now generally widely available at official stations where households and businesses can now purchase that fuel at lower official subsidized prices. Um, whereas previously during times of shortages, they were forced to buy it at, um, at uh, much higher commercial prices or even higher parallel market prices. So this is having positive impacts on livelihoods dependent on fuel, such as in the agriculture or transportation sectors due to reduced costs of inputs and is also exerting some downward pressure on prices of food and essential non-food commodities due to reduced transportation costs. Though um, overall fuel prices do remain elevated. Uh, meanwhile, in IRG controlled areas, fuel prices continue to fluctuate in large part due to exchange rate volatility. Um, on average in June 2022, petrol prices at official stations in IRG controlled areas were 127% higher than the same time last year and 228% higher than the three year average. So this is having um, opposite negative effects on livelihoods and prices. And now on the slide, we're looking at food prices. So this graph is showing the cost of the minimum food basket in IRG and SBA areas shown in blue and orange respectively from January 2015 to June 2022 with the March to June period outlined in this green box. And food prices are quite important in Yemen as most poor households depend on markets for a notable share of their food, even in rural areas. And in the recent months um, outlined in, in green since March, you can see that food prices have been volatile, but have remained high overall. Um, notably in March, prices increased sharply following the Russian invasion of Ukraine as market actors responded to concerns about the future food supply. Um, Yemen imports more than 90% of the country's staple wheat requirements and wheat imports from Russia and Ukraine together previously supplied 42% supplied of Yemen's annual domestic requirements. Um, following the spike, however, in April, prices declined again alongside the start of the truce and the resultant appreciation of the currency um, in both IRG and SBA areas. However, by June, staple food prices were trending upward again 
in both IRG and SBA controlled areas driven by high global prices of food and fuel, disruptions to importation supply chains as traders struggle to source wheat from alternative suppliers and at higher prices. And in IRG controlled areas, depreciation of the currency has been another factor. And so overall in June, 2022, the cost of the minimum food basket was 62% higher than the same time last year in IRG controlled areas and more than five times higher than pre-crisis levels. Um, while in SBA controlled areas, the cost of the minimum food basket was 32% higher than the same time last year. And now looking at how rising prices have affected purchasing power, this graph is showing prices of key staple foods, um, firstly in the first section of the graph, and then the second section of the graph shows labor wage rates, um, which are an important source of income for poor households. And then the final section of the graph on the right combines um, the data on prices of the minimum food basket and the wage rates to show purchasing power for um, the three types of laborers um, as measured by the ratio between the wage rates and the prices of the minimum food basket, um, which we refer to this ratio as the terms of trade. And this is comparing all of these indicators in June 2022 to the same time last year um, in 2021. And as you can see, wage rates for laborers have generally increased over the past year due to inflation in both IRG and SBA areas. However, wage increases have not kept pace with rising food prices and the amount of the minimum food basket that a laborer could buy from um, one day's work is notably less than the same time last year in IRG and SBA controlled areas for all three types of laborers. And for some households dependent on other sources of income, income earning has not increased um, despite inflation. For example, households who earn income from civil servant salaries, which is an important source of income for much of the population, continue to be paid sporadically and the value of salary payments has not been adjusted to keep up with inflation. And so in this context of declining purchasing power, Emergency humanitarian food assistance has become a key source of food and income for around half of the country's population. Um, and this chart is showing the number of beneficiaries reached with emergency food assistance, according to data from FSAC, the Food Security and Agricultural Cluster, from December 2018 to May 2022 at the national level. And here you can see that in 2022, um, which is uh, all the way on the right in the yellow colored bars, the number of beneficiaries reached monthly has declined relative to 2021 levels. And this is due to the fact that WFP has reduced the frequency of distributions of assistance from monthly to a less than monthly frequency due to funding shortages. And um, overall three cycles of assistance distributions are expected to have occurred in the five month period from January to May, 2022. So only three distributions instead of five. Um, and additionally in June, WFP announced significant reductions in food assistance um, rations such that all 13 million beneficiaries will now receive 50% or less of their total energy requirements in WFP's fourth distribution cycle from June to August, whereas previously most beneficiary households received rations equivalent to about 80% of their total um, kilocalorie needs. So these assistance reductions alongside rising prices are expected to be resulting in a growing number of households facing food consumption gaps or widening food consumption gaps and or engaging in extreme coping to um, fill those gaps given their limited ability to expand income earning to compensate for the loss of assistance and also given already highly eroded coping capacity. So with that, um, in June 2022, these are our expected food security outcomes at the governorate level. And we expect that crisis outcomes were widespread across the country in June with millions of households likely experiencing food consumption gaps or engaging in severe coping due to below average income earning significantly above average prices and um, significantly below average purchasing power. 
And as denoted by the exclamation marks, um, large-scale humanitarian assistance, which remains a significant source of food and income for millions of households despite the scale down, is expected to be preventing area level emergency IPC phase four outcomes in many governorates. However, these are outcomes expected at the governorate level and we do expect there to be populations in emergency IPC phase four. Um, I'd also note that at this time of year in rural areas, households are expected to be benefiting from temporarily increased food access due to the recent cereal harvest, but overall own crop production contributes little to overall food needs, and these households are still expected to be relying on markets for much of their food. So in conclusion, given the reductions in assistance and declining purchasing power, a growing number of households are expected to be facing crisis or worse outcomes um, in this current situation period. And now turning to expectations for the projection period. First, um, looking back to the seasonal calendar to take a look at the projection period through January 2023. Um, first, I'll point out Yemen's second rainy season typically occurs from July to October. And in most rural areas, the main harvest of cereals, fruits, and vegetables occurs in the fall. And these are our key assumptions for the projection period. Um, we assume that the ceasefire will continue to be extended throughout the projection period, given the benefits that both parties to the conflict are experiencing under the ceasefire and also the previous two extensions that have occurred. In IRG controlled areas, we expect that the value of the currency will likely um, continue to fluctuate, but we expect that the currency is overall likely to depreciate during the projection period, given expectations for foreign exchange and absence of government controls or meaningful um, financial support likely to be received imminently. Um, in SBA controlled areas, we expect the value of the local currency to continue to remain generally stable and close to current levels as has been the case in the past. Um, also, given reductions to exports from Ukraine, we expect um, significantly that Yemeni traders will likely continue to seek to import a significant share of staple goods, particularly wheat grain, from limited alternative suppliers at higher global prices. Um, however, in light of high global competition for available supplies, high global prices, and in IRG controlled areas, expectations for currency depreciation we expect that import levels of staple wheat will be lower than the same time period of last year. And we also expect the variety and quality of imported foods to reduce overall, uh, given importation challenges and limited government capacity to control food quality in the context of rising importation costs and limited ability of consumers in Yemen to um, in to pay higher prices for higher quality goods. And as a result of expectations for imports amidst concerns about declining in country stocks um, in Yemen, periods of localized shortages of staple wheat flour are expected in IRG controlled areas in the July to September period before a shipment of 500,000 metric tons of wheat grain arrives in the coming months. So given expectation for imports, food prices are expected to continue increasing. Um, and this with depreciation of the currency in IRG controlled areas also expected to contribute to price increases. So overall price increases are expected to be most significant in IRG controlled areas, um, particularly should expectations for periods of shortages of staple wheat flour manifest. Despite improvements in economic and business activity expected due to the ceasefire um, and despite improved fuel availability in SBA areas, access to income from key sources, including labor and government salaries, will likely remain below average for most households. And in terms of humanitarian assistance, according to WFP information in early August, um, we expect that humanitarian assistance will begin to be distributed monthly again, 
So with reduced rations of 50% or less for most beneficiaries, representing an overall reduction in humanitarian assistance provision in the projection period compared to the current situation. And finally, looking to the map on the right, um, this is showing the probability of precipitation in the highest 20% of historically recorded levels in the period of August to October 2022. And you can see from the red over most of Yemen that there is an elevated probability of between 50 to 70% chance of precipitation in um, the lowest 20% Oh, I'm sorry, of the highest 20% of historical levels um, over most of the country in August to October 2022. So this is a, a quite rare um, elevated probability. Um, it doesn't translate into, into, um, ex into the high probability of precipitation in the 20% 20% of historical levels does not translate into any expectations for um, the degree of above average um, precipitation within that range, but um, it is a high a forecast with high confidence for precipitation in the highest 20% of um, what has been recorded in the past. And um, this is it's pretty significant and um, given this we expect an above average risk of flooding during the second rainy season from um, July to October. Uh, so maybe not good news despite some positive impacts on agriculture due to reduced irrigation needs. And these are FuseNet's projected area level food security outcomes throughout the projection period. Overall, most Yemenis are expected to continue facing significantly below average access to food and income, with increases in income earning unlikely to keep up with um, inflation. Reduced humanitarian assistance rations will also further strain households' available resources. So in the June to September period, which you can see mapped on the left, it will be the agricultural off season in lowland rural areas. And this is a time when access to food and income is at seasonally low levels for rural households. Given this expectations, or I'm sorry, given this as well as um, given expectations for declining purchasing power due to rising prices, um, as well as reduced humanitarian assistance rations, um, we expect that the population facing consumption gaps or widening consumption gaps will increase during this period with area level emergency IPC phase four outcomes expected to emerge in Haja, Mareb, Avian, and Lehej governorates. And then in the October to January period, we expect temporary improvement in food consumption in rural areas across the country alongside the main harvest of cereals, fruits, and vegetables. And by November, we expect that most of the areas um, with emergency level outcomes projected in the first projection period will see improvement back to crisis exclamation mark, um, IPC phase three exclamation mark outcomes at the area level, um, given increases in food and income from own crop production and agricultural labor opportunities. However, we expect that emergency outcomes will persist in Marib through January, given the significant number of displaced households who are highly dependent on humanitarian assistance and will face um, significantly reduced food and income due to the assistance reductions. I would also note that throughout the projection period, poor urban populations are of concern due to high market dependence, which will increase further with the assistance reductions. Um, and also, uh, given the expectations that we have for further price increases. Okay, so now turning to our content for Afghanistan. Again, first to orient us in the season. Currently, we are in the middle of Afghanistan's main harvesting season um, and planting of second season crops, including rice, maize, vegetables, and cash crops normally concludes around this time. So as of late June, the harvest has, according to key informants, concluded early across most of the country due to below average precipitation and above average temperatures, which shortened the wheat life cycle this year. 
um, though in higher elevation areas, harvesting was ongoing or had not yet started, according to key informants uh, as of late June. Currently, levels of conflict are significantly lower than prior to the Taliban takeover. And the graph on the left showing levels of population displacement due to conflict presents one indicator of the overall significant decline in civilian impact due to conflict that has occurred since the Taliban takeover. However, there remains violence targeting civilians, including by the Taliban and by the Islamic State. And the map on the right is showing the number of incidents of violence targeting civilians from August 15th of last year to March 15th of this year, according to data from ACLID. And you can see that the highest number of events have been recorded in Kabul and Kandahar provinces, which are the which include the largest cities in Afghanistan and in Nangahar province, which is an Islamic State stronghold. And it should be noted, though, that despite the significant decline in overall levels of conflict that have occurred, particularly related to the escalated levels that occurred in the months preceding the Taliban takeover last year, there are lingering impacts of years of protracted conflict on the economy and livelihoods, including from the significant escalation um, that did occur last year and the consequent waves of population displacement which disrupted livelihoods and income earning. And economic conditions remain quite poor in Afghanistan, um, again, due to the years of conflict, but also more recently due to significant economic shocks that occurred with the Taliban takeover of Kabul last year. And these shocks included a sharp reduction in foreign exchange inflows and development funding and a dramatic reduction in investment and private sector activity alongside the political uncertainty and disruption to financial services that occurred. And this led to job losses with the ILO estimating, um, ILO, the International Labor Organization, estimating that around 500,000 people lost their jobs in the third quarter of 2021. Um, and concerning depreciation on the current. And um, this also led to concerning depreciation of the currency, as you can see on this slide showing the exchange rate at the national level. So despite the recovery of the currency in um, early 2022 that you can see after the Taliban started to hold foreign currency auctions, um, and despite the general stability since then, the value of the Afghani in June 2022 was still 14% lower than at the same time last year. And this is contributing to higher prices, uh, especially of imported goods in the country, including for fuel, fertilizer, and food products. And this chart is, and as you can see here, this chart is showing prices of diesel and fertilizer at the national level from June 2021 to June 2022. And the red box is showing 2022 to date. And in June 2022, prices of diesel averaged nearly double prices recorded at the same time last year, and prices of fertilizer were approaching two and a half times last year's levels. And these are commodities, of course, that are essential for livelihoods, um, but additionally, rising fuel prices are a reason why prices of food and non-food commodities are also rising due to the increasing transportation costs. And you can see that diesel prices have continued to rise in 2022, um, given high global prices of fuel and reported disruptions to importation supply chains. Um, so the prices are continuing to increase despite the stability of the currency. And this chart is showing prices of wheat flour, rice, and vegetable oil, which are three key staple food commodities that make up the majority of the minimum food baskets in Afghanistan. And this is showing prices in Kabul from January 2020 to June 2022. 
And in the first box, you can see that prices increased in the latter half of 2021 following the Taliban takeover. And then in the second box, you can see that food prices did decline slightly in early 2022 alongside recovery of the currency. But since then, prices have continued to increase, driven by rising fuel prices and rising global pr commodity prices. And as of June 2022, Two, the cost of this partial minimum food basket in Kabul was 47% higher than the same time last year. And these high prices are significantly reducing household purchasing power. And the graph on this slide illustrates this with proxy indicators um, for two e two key income sources for poor households calculated in exactly the same way um, as we saw for Yemen. Um, first, the blue line is showing the amount of staple wheat flour a casual laborer could purchase from one full day's work at prevailing prices and wage rates. And the green line is showing the amount of staple wheat flour a pastoralist could purchase from the sale of one sheep at prevailing prices. And you can see that in June 20. 22, a laborer could purchase 43% less wheat flour compared to last year, and a pastoralist could purchase 35% less wheat flour compared to last year. And this is being driven primarily by significantly elevated wheat flour prices, which at the national level were 67% higher than last year in June. Um, and that is why the trends that you see for laborers and pastoralists look so similar because they're both being driven by um, wheat flour prices primarily. Um, on average, sheep flour, I'm sorry, sheep prices are actually 8% higher than last year at the national level. Um, though labor wages are 5% lower than last year on average at the national level. So the reduced labor wages are also contributing slightly to the um, lower purchasing power. But in addition to um, the lower purchasing power that we saw graphed on the previous slide, there has also been a reduction in opportunities for income earning. Uh, many people lost jobs in the government or in humanitarian organizations with the Taliban takeover, and there was also a reduction in demand for labor, which is an important source of income for poor households, especially in urban areas. And the graph on the slide is showing demand for casual labor across eight key markets of Afghanistan, with Kabul separated out from the rest of those. And the box is showing the period since the Taliban takeover. And you can see from the orange, um, line that demand for labor has increased in some areas in recent months in line with typical seasonal trends in the spring and summer as the weather warms. However, overall in June 2022, at the national level, demand remained 21% lower than the same time last year and has also been, um, you, as you can see, generally declining year on year. On the other hand, I want to point out that there are two income sources that we expect are providing poor households with more income compared to this time last year. And these are first income from poppy production and labor due to increased cultivation and rising prices following the Taliban takeover. And second, income from foreign remittances, as we expect that Afghans abroad have increased support to family back home to the extent possible, though there is concern for below average remittances from Iran given um, high rates of return of Afghan migrant workers um, previously in Iran. And now turning to focus a bit on the recent production season, this graph is showing historical wheat produc production levels first just to um, provide some context. And I want to show that wheat production last year in 2021 was below average, driven by below average precipitation associated with La Nina conditions. And you can see from the orange bar segment of 2021 that rain-fed wheat production recorded the greatest losses in last year in 2021. And this year was a second consecutive La Nina season. And the map on the left of the slide shows cumulative precipitation anomalies relative to the long-term average in this year's precipitation season, which started in October 2021 and concluded in May of 2022. 
And the map on the right is showing the previous season for comparison. So this year, as you can see, the season concluded with below average precipitation across most of the country with some of the worst deficits recorded in the northern rain-fed wheat production belt, which is of high concern for rain-fed wheat production. And significantly, these deficits are even worse than what was recorded last year when rain-fed wheat production was notably below average. And this slide is showing vegetation conditions as measured by satellite data um, in these two time periods, first April 11th through 2020 on the left, I'm sorry, April 11th through 20th on the left and July 1st through 10th on the right. Um, and this is expressed as a percent of the long-term average. So it's showing the vegetation conditions compared to average for that time period. Um, and uh, the April period on the left um, was chosen because it is expected to be a period of time before harvesting started in earnest in lower elevation areas. Um, and on the right is a more recent time period in early July. And what you can see um, is the, the significantly below normal vegetation conditions across most of the country in the period where um, crops were expected to still be in the fields and the worst vegetation conditions were uh, um, recorded over the northern rain fed belt. So this is another indicator expressing, um, indicating con high concern for wheat production in northern rain fed areas. So given this evidence and available information from key informants overall, wheat production this year is expected to be below average across widespread areas of the country with provinces in the rain-fed production belt among the worst affected. <clears throat> Excuse me. And more recently, you can see the below normal vegetation conditions that have emerged in higher elevation areas in the central region of the country as well. And this is of concern for pasture conditions for livestock. Now looking to humanitarian assistance trends, emergency food assistance programming was significantly scaled up following the Taliban takeover, um, as you can see, and WFP targeted a high of 18 million people in May of 2022, more than 11 times the number reached in May of the prior two years following significant scale up of assistance. Um, WFP is now scaling down to target 10 million people in the post-harvest period from June to September. But again, this level of um, assistance provision is still more than five times the number reached in prior years. So this is expected to be playing a significant role in preventing food security, in preventing worse food security outcomes across the country. So with that, turning to look at our current food security outcomes for Afghanistan, this is FuseNet's remote monitoring map, um, which you can see is different from the more detailed maps we saw for Yemen. Um, and this is because as of January 2022, FuseNet officially transitioned Afghanistan to a remote monitoring country, given the fact that we no longer have colleagues working in the country following the Taliban takeover. As such, with less available precision than presence countries, um, our remote monitoring mapping outlines the country in the most severe IPC phase we expect to see in any area of the country um, during the mapping period. So this does not indicate the outcomes we expect across the whole country, just the worst outcomes we expect anywhere in the country. So what you can see is that the worst area level phase that was expected in Afghanistan in June 2022 was crisis exclamation mark, IPC phase three exclamation mark. And this was expected in higher elevation areas where the harvest had not yet started at that time. However, in lower elevation rural areas, we expect that the harvest had improved area level outcomes to stressed IPC phase two or stress exclamation mark, IPC phase two exclamation mark, given increased availability of own crops and increased access to income from harvesting labor opportunities. Uh, however, food security in urban areas also remains of concern given that urban households are highly dependent on markets for a large share of their food. 
Given below average purchasing power, we expect that most poor urban households are likely facing crisis IPC phase three outcomes in the absence of assistance or stressed exclamation mark outcomes supported by assistance with stressed exclamation mark outcomes expected at the area level in urban areas. And so now turning to our projection period through January 2022, um, returning briefly to the seasonal calendar, I'll point out the harvest of second season crops in the fall um, is expected to provide further access to income from labor and crop sales. And also that the next precipitation and agricultural season will start in the fall. And as time goes by through January, the winter and lean seasons will set in. Um, and intensify, and this is a time when access to food and income seasonally declines. So these are our key assumptions for the projection period. <clears throat> First, wheat production is likely to be below average at the national level with the worst deficits expected in rain-fed production areas. However, irrigated wheat production is also expected to be below average due to below average area planted and some reductions in yield. Production of second season crops and cash crops is expected to be below average, um, with, ex with the exception of poppy, is expected to be below average due to below average precipitation, below average irrigation water availability driven by below average snow accumulation and early snow melt, and also due to competition um, with other cash crops such as poppy. Pasture conditions are expected to deteriorate during the dry season and remain below average through at least the start of the 2022-23 wet season in October, um, which will continue to strain pastoralist livelihoods due to high competition for available pasture. Um, prices of food and essential non-food commodities will likely increase and remain significantly above average due to high transportation costs and high global prices. Below average national wheat production and higher regional prices will also contribute to above average wheat flour prices, um, which are generally expected to increase throughout the winter and lean seasons. Access to income from key sources, including labor, is expected to remain below average overall due to poor economic conditions and also is expected to decline during the winter months along with typical seasonal trends. And in terms of humanitarian assistance, this will likely continue at significantly above average levels. Um, we expect that it will remain significantly higher than in recent years. Um, and above at above average levels given WFP stated plans to reach 10 million people each month from June to September. And then following this due to um, historical trends um, where WFP will most likely scale up assistance provision during the winter and lean seasons, as well as just the above average needs in the country. And the map on the slide is the precipitation probability forecast from the international NMME ensemble. Um, and as you can see from the red colors, this is essentially showing that precipitation in the beginning of Afghanistan's um, next winter wet season from October to December 2022 is most likely to be below average given, given forecast La Nina conditions. Um, so this is uh, bad news. Should this forecast manifest, it could reduce planting activity in the fall depending on the timing. Um, and distribution of precipitation received and could also lead to a third consecutive drought year in parts of Afghanistan, which would um, lead to the worst impacts on food security beyond this projection period in the subsequent lean season. And this slide shows FuseNet's projected outcomes through January 2023. In the June to September period on the left-hand side, many rural households will have improved access to food and income from the first and second season harvest. And stressed and stressed exclamation mark outcomes are expected to persist in most lower elevation rural areas. And in higher elevation areas, increased availability of food from the harvest around August is expected to improve the area level outcomes from the crisis exclamation mark outcomes that you see mapped to stressed IPC phase two outcomes. And I want to emphasize that even though the worst area level phase mapped is crisis, 
crisis exclamation mark, given the expectations of crisis exclamation mark outcomes in highland areas through August. This is the post-harvest period and most of the country is expected to be in stressed or stressed exclamation mark during this time. However, worst affected poor households who are not receiving assistance will likely remain in crisis IPC phase three even in this period. Meanwhile, um, in the October to January period on the right, of the slide, many poor households will still have access to food and income from own crop production and labor opportunities supporting stress exclamation mark outcomes, um, also given the significant humanitarian assistance expected. However, an increasing number of rural households will exhaust food stocks as time goes by, particularly in areas where crop production is poor. Um, in these areas, households are likely to exhaust food stocks atypically early. And area level crisis IPC phase three outcomes are expected to reemerge in worst affected, worst drought affected areas by January. Um, and I also want to emphasize that in the absence of assistance, we would expect large segments of the population to be facing consumption gaps. Um, so with that, I'll conclude.